Good day, everybody. Hunts here, and welcome back to History Talk Farm. Hope everyone's enjoying. Remember, hit that like button, as well as leave a comment down below telling me what historical question you have so I can answer in a future episode. But for now, sit back, relax, grab a snack, and enjoy our chalk show. Chalk show? Talk show. Wow. Ugh. Hope everyone's doing fine. The allergies. Oh, they were not that bad in spring, but now they're getting pretty bad. Gamepad mode activated. Uh, oh. Do I have a controller plugged in? Oh, I have my controller plugged in. Let's disable that. All right, let's see what the weather's like today. It's going to be clear and sunny for tomorrow. Hey, everyone's happy. Good. Fences. Yeah, okay. Well, we don't have any fences, so... We need our... Not scrap. Watering can? No. Watering can. Yes. Oops. Alright, let's just water all of our crops. Yay, so many crops. Ah, we need water. This is not bad. This is a very peaceful, relaxing game. So much better than the stressful strategy games you've been playing recently. There's really not much strategy here. Just go around. Plant your crops. Take in the scenery. Listen to some beautiful music. And just prepare a harvest, harvest for next uh, season. I gotta move the <laughs> our recording time off to the side because it's covering the actual date of the game for me. Oh. Ah! I don't want to use all so much water. Okay. Ooh, out of water. Alright, we got a letter. Dear Farmer Hunts, I'd like to apologize for joking about your grandpa's old cottage when we first met. It's really a nice little house. However, you might need some more space someday. That's where I can help. If you can bring me some raw materials and pay a fee, I can expand your home. First expansion I offer includes a kitchen. With a kitchen, you'll be able to cook any recipes you've learned. Anyway, I hope you're starting to feel at home in Stardew Valley. Ah, thank you, Robin. That's really nice of you. Yes, I am starting to feel at home here. Let's go fishing. Fishing, fishing, fishing. Since high luck, let's just do one round of fishing. And then, you know what? I don't think you've gone caving yet. So let's do that. After I catch our first fish. Ah, so peaceful. Ooh! I thought, <laughs> I thought the butterfly was, hey, we got something. <laughs> oh my. No, you, Jojo Cola. Ugh, it's trash. So I'll put it there. Don't need the fishing rod. So let's take a few spring onions. We don't have a big backpack, so we really can't go deep into the mines. Ooh, leak? Ah, leak! Well, if this is such a good day, it might be a good time to go mining. Are there any quests? Nope. So up we go. Alright, so today's question is again coming from the Great Warlock Kadash. So remember guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Hey, data line. Hey, multiple data lines. Let's see, anything else? 
Doesn't look like it. More data lions! How wonderful. How wonderbar. Yes, yeah, so if you guys have me. Ooh! <laughs> I'm like going to seek and I see something cool! Oh, we got clay. Eh. We're gonna get a lot of that. Ooh, a horse radish. Ooh, it's a star quality! Nice! Crops coming through qualities. We got a nice one right there. Let me mute my phone. Ah, the adventurer. Merlin. Hmm. I was just peering down into this old mine shaft. It's been abandoned for decades. Still. There's probably good ore down there, but a dark place undisturbed for so long, I'm afraid ore isn't the only thing you'll find. Ooh, how eerie. Here, take this. You might need it. We get a sword. Woohoo. Nice. You received a rusty sword. Name's Marlin, by the way. I run the Ventures Guild right outside. I'll keep my eye on you. Ha <laughs> ha. Get it? I. He has an eye patch. I. Ha. Prove yourself, and I might think about making you a member. Hey. Okay. We'll be an adventure. Adventure time. Ah, there's the sword. Let's move some of our goodies around. Nice. And we find cave. A quiet cave. Nice. Right, so we gotta find the way down. And look at that. One strike. Ooh, we found an earth crystal already. That's nice. And copper ore. Ooh, we can't pick it up. So, uh, hmm. Let's get rid of the dandelions. Alright, so let's find our way down. Nice, nice. Ooh, a lot of copper ore. Look at that. Nothing up here. Oh, ah! What the? Oh, it's a... A rock crab. I expect Oh, ow. We took damage. Hey, we got it. Wait, inventory's full? Oh, I dropped something. Um, stone. Oh, we got a cherry bomb, folks. Ooh, another one. So they block your attack. They dropped a crab too? Oh my, uh, Earth Crystal. We're getting some amazing lucky things. Fortune Teller is right. Oh, uh. A lot of monsters here. Ooh, we're getting some good crits here. Now, you can't pick up any of those goodies, but... Oh, this line made us slow. Oops. Ah! Okay, so that slime's dead. Hey, look at that! We already found the tunnel out of here. Hey, we found another tunnel out of there.
And we found wood. Oh, that's nice. But let's get this copper ore. Go down. Now let's just see if there's any more copper ore on this floor and then head back to the mainland. Okay, it might take a little too much damage, and it doesn't look like there's any more copper ore. So we'll head back. And this saves our worker. See? So we can take this elevator to go down a level next time. Alright, so Warlock... Ooh, oh, I don't have fishing pole, nor room. Um, Warlock Kadash's question for the day. How historically accurate is Assassin's Creed? Interesting, because Assassin's Creed is not just an assassination game. It is based in, I think it has, what, five versions now? Maybe six? Of taking part in a lot of historical... I can't pick it up. Alright, so we gotta go foraging. What? Well, time period. So, let's see. Second Creed 3 is during... What again? Um, That was during the U.S. Revolution. Assassin's Creed 1 was during the Crusades, which starts off, basically. Alright, we gotta get more chests. So, you know, we're actually gonna chop a lot of wood. Ooh, deep in the mine. Reach level 40. We don't have a lot of energy, so we gotta get something that gives us energy. Hey, look at that. We have those spring onions. Good. Let's chop down this tree. No, we lost a lot of stuff into the water. Ah, Pooey. And pooey. Let's eat. Now, you can't forget about that horse radish that's all the way up top. Now, I didn't give us that much energy, but it's enough to cut down at least one tree. And we'll head south where all the other... Uh, Leaks were. Not leaks, uh, spring onions. See, so each shop does what? One? Yep. Timber! Nice. And it costs 50 wood to make a chest. Wood out here does respawn, which is nice. So, how accurate is Assassin's Creed? Uh, remember, it is a video game. So, accuracy most likely is not going to be there. But the developers did do a good job. Uh, I want to eat. There you go. So, how they do a good job? Well, the Crusades, that did happen. There's actually an Assassin's Guild during the Crusades. So that's accurate. So they're two for two right now. The Crusades happen and there's an Assassin's Guild. Oh my. Ooh, that gives us 10 energy. That's nice. So we've eaten the dandelion, which will give us more energy. The spring onion. I got a lot of energy. Ooh. Hey, Wormies! Hey, we got that clay back. How wunderbar. Um, so, hey, there's that. <laughs> but. Um, and what is it? The first game was the Crusade. So, the Musiaf Castle, which is in the Crusade version of uh, Assassin's Creed. That is where the Assassination Guild was, so, I mean, that's accurate. There you go. Um, and uh, where you, the individuals you commit the assassinations against, those are true historical figures, and most, well, 90% are true, and most of them died at the time frame that the game was talking about. So, hey, another point of accuracy. Now, it's still a game setting, so 
the developers did an amazing job doing their research, but how those deaths occurred was not because of assassinations. At least that's been proven. It's not because of ass ass assassinations. Now, did they? Um, let's leave that to your imagination. <laughs> but no. To all historians, those assassinations did not occur. Hey, we got enough wood for... Where do we, wood? Where do we put the wood? Oh, you know what? Chest. And we will... Pick up this chest and color code it to green for crops. So, crops. Crop, crop. Ah, uh, forging for now. For crop. Alright. Potatoes. Oh, wow, it is downpouring outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. No, no eating dandelion. Potatoes, and I want to use that because I want to sell those. So, okay, this Mac, I see. There's some fictional storytelling, but they did a pretty good job. There's also the Knights Templar. They were real. That's who the Assassin's Creed really took on about. Those guys are real. They're military. Uh, they helped the Crusaders. They were Crusaders. But their existence ended in around the 1300s, where most of the members were burned to death because of heresy, witchcraft, or a part of the Inquisition, or anything along those lines because the... They angered someone powerful in the church. Never do that, at least during the Middle Ages. The church was extremely powerful. Also devious, and uh, quite a few other issues that I will not get into because of religious concerns, and yeah, if you study history, you might have a distaste to the institution that was religious. I'm still faithful myself, but the institution, you might lose, you will lose something. Not much, but something. So there, that is true. There's some facts. But were there uh, Knights nice Templar assassins? There's no historical knowledge or historical evidence proving they were or were not. Oh, we got trash? Come on. Well, let's. Oh, it's almost midnight, so let's go to sleep. And there's been the Vinci Coat. So many people have been. Ooh, pickaxe. And we can build our own cherry bombs. Cool. We get some money. 86 gold. Not bad. Uh -oh. So, there's been a lot of conspiracy theories and all that around the Knights Templar. <laughs> Proven, false. You guys take that all with a grain of salt. Most of this stuff I don't believe is true. It's just... Because they were taken out by the church so long ago, there's not many records that can defend them. Ooh, hey, we meet Clint. Right? Clint, yeah. Ah, oh, hi there, good morning. I noticed that you've been breaking some rocks open and finding ore. That's good. Why, well, yes, yes it is. If you want to get the most out of the ores you find, you'll need a furnace. Just so happens, I had an extra set of blueprints lying around here. I want you to have them. Hey, right, thank you, you're a nice guy. Hey, blueprints. Learn you learned how to craft a furnace. Cool. The furnace allows you to smelt metal bars. The bars can be used for crafting, construction, and tool upgrades. When you smelted a few copper bars, consider having me upgrade one of your tools. It can make your work a lot easier. Well, okay, I'm heading home. Take it easy. I well, thank you, Clint. And we will be taking you up on that offer for upgrading. We have to craft a furnace. I see you've been exploring the old mines. You've got an adventurous spirit. How much I can tell. If you can slay ten slimes, you'll have earned your place in the Adventures Guild. Be careful. You got a man. Oh, we got our harvest of parsnips. No! <laughs> I didn't want to fish. Let's see. Aw, oh, we got all planes and one gold. <sighs> really? No gold. Fine, fine. Ah! Want that. Got 17 parsnips. You know what? We're gonna sell these parsnips and try and get some more gold ones. 
We need the watering can, and we're going to use sap. Why? Well, I'm going to use the sap to make fertilizer. Um, I don't know if you guys just heard my roommate, the good Zerglings too, but he just sounded like, a uh, one of, oh, no, I'm trying to blank out the names, the Three Stooges, he's made the Three Stooges noise, good lord, living with friends, it makes things interesting, uh, so, yeah, alright, so we got the Night Templar, and the Assassin's Creed mythology, yes, there's, oh, whoa. there's a lot of, not, I don't want to say accuracies, but the developers definitely did their homework, which I love. And they're actually pretty fun games. Now, oh, to a fun tidbit from a Zero Wolf. He's playing Warframe. Might jump with them later. Um, but let's see. So, in Assassin's Creed 3, it covers the American Revolution. But well, when I teach the American Revolution to my students, there's something I love to bring up about them. And the Assassin's Creed does a pretty good job, or at least in three, of covering the American Revolution. And there's one topic, the Boston Massacre. Why is this interesting? Well, oh, hey, where's the site? And why do I teach it? Oh, that's fine. I keep some train of thought while I do this. Crafting. That's an overkill on the fertilizer, but we will use it. Okay. Now let's head to town to sell our goods. But we gotta talk. What, ooh, hey, Dandelion. What you see in Assassin's Creed 3 and one of the early missions is the Boston Massacre. Now, if you're not from the United States or England or have learned about the Boston Massacre or its other names. Oh, why am I drawing a blank on its other name? Give me one second while I look at my old notes of teaching the class. Oh, come on. Ah, the incident on King Street. Which happened on King Street in Boston. Um, is when a group of British soldiers fired on a crowd. Oh, I was going to rev the trash. They don't want to see me do it. Come on, go away. Nothing. Ooh. Hey, Caroline, we actually got to meet you. Possibly. You work part time. Ten slimes. Okay, introductions. We haven't met Abigail, I think, right? Yes, Abigail. That's the only one we haven't met yet. Um. So, what you know, basic, basic, basic off the history textbooks. Seaweed. Please be one to Sebastian. Oh. Okay. It's actually gonna be pretty easy. Hey! Woo, we can meet Abigail! We met everyone! Oh, okay. Fine, you're not in a good mood. Give someone a gift. Oh, that's gonna be fine. Let's sell for 43. 420. Look at that! Money, 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 money. But we need some parsnips. To try and get some gold parsnips. Okay. Now we're not going for the richer you the rich, rich, rich of goods, but you know what? Let's give Robin a dinner line. Thank you, this might come in handy. And we get a hundred gold for it. Nice! That would be well, cause in two days, so next episode, we'll have the spring festival. Strawberry festival. Alright, so the Boston Massacre. What's known is British soldiers fired on Americans a mob of had American colonial citizens and killed a few. Um, and it was, they thought everyone was innocent and it was considered a massacre. And this is one of the things that prompted the American Revolution. Yeah. 
Can you smell the propaganda there? Can you also... Oh, hey, that we just bought enough? I wasn't even counting. Oh, I'm a genius. No, um... Let's see. Can I kind of just go fishing today? Spend the rest of the day fishing. And chopping wood. Oh. Now, let's just go spend the rest of the day fishing. Fishing, fishing, fishing. That'll grow back. Don't you love nature? Um. So, what was going on? Well, uh, the American colonial citizens were angered over taxes. They were being taxed by the British Crown because they were, British Crown was still trying, or government was trying to pay off the, the debts incurred during the French Indian War of the 1750s uh, to 1760s, which was the Britain fighting the French throughout the entire world, so it can be called the World War II, and other colonial powers, one being the United States, the colonies in North America. Oh, this sound. Okay, uh, options. Ambient noise. Let's turn that down as we talk. Um, so, uh, the, cl the citizens were kind of annoyed. I mean, th how do they expect the defense of the British soldiers being in the colonies, but you had to pay your taxes? What they're angry about was not paying taxes. They didn't. They knew they had to pay taxes to get some of the luxury goods they were getting. So, soldiers, garrisons, trade, transport, road upkeep, basic government functions, taxes. That's what it's paid for. That's what it's used for. But they were angry about, they were being taxed without representation. So they didn't have a say in why they are taxed, or how they are taxed. And that's what they wanted. Now remember, a lot of these people were... Ooh, hey. Were at least coming from... Oh, hey, we got some more. A kind of standing in England where they had representation once before. Now they don't. So, they wish they still did. Oh. Oh my god, this fish is going to make things super easy for us, aren't they? No! I say that. Oh, we're hearing. So, that's what they're protesting. The taxing. Um... A lot of different acts, like Quartering Act, Tea Act. Ooh, a treasure chest. But, no, we want to see fish. Oh my god, ah. Uh, fishing with a mouse is a lot more difficult than a control. And show So what happened was, the colonists were gathering to protest on King Street in Boston. Walking down the streets, yelling, protesting, trying to get someone's attention, and just show their grievance that they were angry. So there was a mob of a lot of angry citizens. It was also cold out, and it was night, it was snowing, it was dark. It was March 5th, so still late winter, early spring for Boston. And then North. So, you have one side as angry group of protesters. Second side is British soldiers. Now, they're not soldiers you would think of. Big, professional redcoats coming over. No, this is not the cream of the crop for the British Army. They were called colonial troops. So, what they were? They were volunteers. They are also low men on the totem pole. They are those who have not had true military service. Oh, we gotta get some of the stuff off our rack. Huh. So they did have tr full military service. They weren't professional soldiers. They're training to be professional soldiers, and usually this was their first deployment out after boot camp or training grounds. They're also a group of militia or paid mercenaries. They were not the cream of the crop soldiers. They really had no experience in war nor police duty. 
They were told to be police officers, but they had no training. And also, they were kids. Think, not just in the U.S., our soldiers, you can ro draft and roll at 18, maybe 17 with the parents' note. You also had education. You had at least a high school education. So you know a couple of things. Maybe not a lot. I mean, I'll take it you do know quite a bit. But compared to the, these British soldiers, you they had maybe an education level in today's standard of 5th grade. Maybe 4th grade. Some might have gone a lot higher. But... I will say the average was around a 5th grade education. And there's going to be a fish chest. Eee, fish. Fish, fish, fish. Nope. Fish, 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 fish. Fish. Fish, fish. Fishy, fish, fish. Fish, fish. Okay. Fishes, take out the gold, silver to sell. Sell, sell. General chest, put a sword in here. And we'll just go fishing again, uh, just on the river. Alright, so, yeah. Think of that mentality. In this case, though, you have 15 year olds to 20 year olds in this group. And this group of maybe five to eight soldiers with one captain level who is a non-commissioned officer in this regard, who doesn't have much training himself. These are young kids at night going out to patrol their streets, looking just to keep robbers and this like from committing mischief not an angry group of protesters. And you see this in action in Assassin's Creed 3. You see the soldiers being out there. They're talking about the cold, the mobs, them being scared of themselves. You see the, uh, the colonists getting rowdy, preparing themselves. And so you have the group of 50 to 60 colonists marching on the street. And these eight to ten soldiers walking down, being guards and being policemen. So if you have a policeman come up to you and go to a group of people, hey, your car's in a ruckus, it's night, don't have permission to protest, go to sleep. Maybe people will behave and do that? This is not that that will happen. Instead, the colonists got even angrier. And they start shouting, yelling, screaming at the soldiers. Oh, we got a brain. Nice. We got angry shouting, yelling at these soldiers. The soldiers were freaking out, trying to keep calm, but they were young kids. And these people, adults, 40, 50, 60 year olds, yelling, screaming, telling them the no good killers, monsters, everything you can think of that's awful. Now, remember, I'm not trying to defend them, I'm just playing the atmosphere. Um, so, there's a whole mob. And then, people in the mob started throwing bricks, stones, ice at these soldiers. Hitting them, injuring them. These are kids again. You gotta hint that, these are kids. They raised their guns. And then, they're already being thrown at, there's rocks being thrown at them. There's a gunshot. No one knows for sure who that gunshot came from. In Assassin's Creed, I believe it was a red coat, but an assassin fired trying to start this war, trying to start conflict, so he fires his gun. In history, in the real world, no one knows who fired. There's no records of saying who fired. The British soldiers didn't know who fired. The colonists didn't know who fired. British soldiers thought the colonists fired at them. They would have been attacked. The colonists thought the British soldiers fired. So, like a police officer, so if they hear a gun and there's already being attacked, they might fire. I'm not sure. I know the police officers myself. The ones I know, they will never do that. But these are kids. They reacted. 
the commander was not giving them good orders, and so they fired on the crowd. Killing five people. Injuring six more. Not really a massacre, but it is a, a murder. And that is so much confusion in that area. And then the whole idea of a Boston massacre came from press. Fake news. That's so much common now. Ah, uh, can't believe I had to use that word. But there's a group of colonists who took advantage of the situation to try and stir up even more angry feelings and produce this whole Boston massacre ideology and post it out to other colonists. And it's stuck. Now, why can I defend the British soldiers? Well, did you know? That when they went to court, and yes, they actually went to court, they were arrested by the British authorities for these crimes, and they were held at trial. But who defended them? Our second president of the United States, John Adams. He was their defense attorney. And he proved these were kids. They got attacked by a crowd, and so they reacted. Now, most of the soldiers themselves got off, but the captain was arrested, charged, and found guilty for his crimes. He was actually found guilty and punished. He was the leader. He should have known better, and it was proven in court that he should have. And so, appropriate punishment was met out. Um, While well, on the Assassin's Creed, uh, they doesn't work like that. Now Adams does defend him, and but we see as with the propaganda, ah, uh, it did not go over so well. But so, Assassin's Creed does, the developers did a good job of finding historical significance in the situation. Not sleep just yet. Let's pause while I finish and wrap this up. They're very good at their research and putting it all into a narrative and inputting their perspective onto the narrative. Ooh. But the consequences and the actions into the narrative, that's fictional. But they did, I will say they did on a scale of one to 10, I would give them an nine for research, five for execution, because, some of it is really, really, really obscure. No, it is game more than the later games, but... And 7 for overall story. So, let's give them a 7 total all. They did a good job, great games, recommend to play. And for history's perspective, if you want to see a broad theme, good. But if you want the details, definitely go take a history class. Go to the library, pick up a book, read. Or just do some research on Google. Google... A lot of histories out on Google now. A lot of historians are publishing their things, and it is you can find historical perspective from a teacher in Florida to British scholars in the Library of London to Beijing, China. Everyone's collaborating now, and the internet is amazing at this. But this has gone long enough. I hope everyone's enjoyed themselves. Until next time, welcome to History Talk Forum. Leave a comments down below and tell me what you want to know in history. Until next time, though, we'll go to bed and say later, alligators. Time to go to sleep. Till next time. Later, folks.